So let's try to solve this group assignment. Now we are going to provide a step-by-step -step solution to this problem. Now we are asked to find the value of the current in all resistors of the circuits below using total resistance and voltage drop principles. Now we are given a caution not to use current division rule. So we are going to find the current in all these resistors using the principles of total resistance as well as voltage drop and we are cautioned not to use current division rule so how do we solve this problem now first of all we have one two three four five six seven different resistors connected in this circuit we have a short circuit in between the 5 ohm and the 7 ohm resistor and we have the voltage source to be 25 volts now we know that the voltage source is going to produce current that is going to be distributed in each branch of the circuit so we have current let's say current i produced by the 25 volts now this current is going to flow through the 1 ohm resistor on reaching this junction we have the current going to split so let's assume that we have current I1 flowing through this branch. So flowing through the 2 ohms resistor. And then we also have current I2 flowing through the opposite direction. Now also on reaching this junction, we have the current going to further split. So we have I2 splitting so that we have this to be I3 flowing through the 4 ohms resistor. And then we have let's say i4 flowing in that direction so this current flows through both the 3.5 ohms resistor and the 3 ohms resistor simply because they are connected in series so we have the same current flowing through them now on reaching this junction ideally the current is supposed to split however we have a short circuit connected here now this short circuit literally has no internal resistance or has no resistance hence when the current reaches this junction that is i4 instead of it to split so that we have the current being distributed between the 5 ohms resistor the short circuit and the 7 ohms resistor because there is no resistance here the current would like to flow in this direction through the short circuit neglecting both the 5 ohms resistor as well as the 7 ohms resistor so the current will always like to flow in the least or the lowest resistance path so keep that in mind the current will like to flow through the lowest or the least resistance path neglecting the 5 ohms resistor as well as the 7 ohms resistor so when i4 reaches here we have all the currents flowing through the short circuits so i4 flows through the short circuits and then we have no current flowing through 5 ohms and then 7 ohms so we can say that the current through the 5 ohms resistor as well as the current flowing through the 7 ohms resistor is 0 amperes we have no current flowing through those two resistors because they are short circuited now to easily realize how a resistor is short circuited now when you go through a loop without passing through any other circuit element except one resistor then it means that that resistor has been short circuited if you go through a loop without passing through any other circuit element except one resistor it means that that resistor has been short circuited and so you realize that we go through this loop without passing through any other circuit element except the 5 ohms resistor so it means it has been short circuited again you can go through this loop without passing through any other circuit element except the 7 ohms resistor which also means that it has been short circuited now when a resistor has been short circuited it means that we have no current flowing through that particular resistor and so we can redraw the circuits by eliminating the 5 ohms resistor as well as the 7 ohms resistor so let's do that in the next section so let's redraw the circuit
so we have this to be the 25 volt source we have this to be the 1 ohm resistor 4 ohm resistor 3.5 ohm and then 3 ohm resistor and then we have the last one to be the 2 ohm resistor now these two resistors are connected in series because we have the same current flowing through them and so the combination of these two resistors is basically the sum of the two values so we are going to add these two resistors and then we have 6.5 ohms and this combination resistor is also in parallel with this 4 ohms resistor so for two resistors to be in parallel you can go through the loop without passing through any other circuit element except those two resistors so here we have only four and then 6.5 if we take this loop and so these two resistors are connected in parallel so let's try to find the combination so we have four parallel 6.5 and that is equal to so we are going to multiply the two values and then we divide by the sum of the two values so 4 times 6.5 that gives 26 divided by 4 plus 6.5 we have 10.5 and then that's going to be 2.476 ohms so this is a combination resistor as a result of the 4 and then the 6.5 ohms in parallel so let's write that here 2.476 ohms now this combination resistor is also going to be in parallel with this 2 ohms resistor because when you go through this loop without passing through any other circuit element you only have these two resistors which means that they are connected in parallel and then the combination of these two resistors will be in series with this 1 ohm resistor so let's try to find the total resistance for this particular circuit so we have RT to be equal to we have 2 parallel 2.476 or plus plus 1 now even before that let's try to redraw the reduced circuit so we have this to be the 1 ohm resistor and then 25 volt source this is the combination resistor 2.476 ohms and then we have this to be the 2 ohms resistor so let's let's move on as we want to find the total resistance for this circuit so we have 2 times 2.476 divided by 2 plus 2.476 plus 1 now 2 times 2.476 gives 4.952 4 divided by 2 plus 2.476 that gives 4.476 4 plus 1. We have this fraction giving us 1.106 1 and then plus 1. And so we have 2.106 ohms. So that is the total resistance for this circuit. Now since we have the total resistance for this circuit, we can basically move on to find the total current produced by the 25 volt source. So let's call that IT, the total current produced by the 25 volt source. So that is given by... From Ohm's law, we know that V is equal to IR. And so if you want to make I the subject, you have I to be equal to V divided by R. So we have our V to be 25 divided by the total resistance, that is 2.106. And then 25 divided by 2.106 gives 11.871 so it means that the total current 
produced by this voltage source, the 25 volt source, is 11.871 amperes. Now you need to understand that the total current produced by the 25 volt source, which is IT, is the same current that flows through the 1 ohm resistor. And so, in actual sense, we have the current flowing through the 1 ohm resistor to be 11.871 amperes. Again, now the current upon reaching this junction is going to split. So let's consider this diagram, this circuit. So the current upon reaching this junction is supposed to split so that we have part of the current flowing through this direction and the remaining current also flowing through that direction. Now in the question, we are cautioned not to use current division rule. And so we want to find the voltage dropped across this particular resistor. Now, whenever current flows through a resistor, some of the voltage is being dropped across the resistor and the voltage dropped across this one ohm resistor is given by the product of the current that flows through the resistor and the value of the resistor. And so if you want to find the voltage dropped across the one ohm resistor, then we have that to be equal to the value of the current that flows through that resistor, which is the total current times the value of the resistor, which is one. And so you have 11.871 times one, and that is equal to 11.871 volts. So that is the voltage dropped across the one ohm resistor. So the left voltage can be found by subtracting the voltage dropped across the 1 ohm resistor from this 25 volt source. Notice that the voltage divider rule is used to share voltages between resistors that are connected in series. So basically, we have the total voltage VT, which is 25 volts, to be equal to the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor plus the left voltage let's call that vx and so if you want to find the left voltage then that is basically vx equals 25 minus voltage across the 1 ohm resistor which is 11.871 and that is equal to 13.129 volts so vx is the left voltage now this voltage is going to be expressed across both the two ohms resistor and the combination resistor, which is 2.476. So we have 13.129 volts and then 13.129 volts. Now, the reason being that that is the voltage we have at this point. And so since these two resistors are connected in parallel it means that they have the same voltage expressed across them so in actual sense for resistors in parallel we have the same voltage expressed across each of the resistors and so to find the current flowing through the two ohms resistor then we have i2 ohm to be equal to the voltage across the resistor which is 13.129 divided by the value of the resistor, which is two. And therefore we have this to be 6.565 amperes. So that happens to be the current through the two ohms resistor. Again, if you want to find the current flowing through this combination resistor, basically we are going to divide 13.129 by 2.476. Now we should understand that this combination is as a result of the 4 ohms resistor and the 6.5 ohms resistor connected in parallel. So in actual sense, we have that voltage at this point. So we have this to be 13.129 volts and that is expressed across 
both the 4 ohms resistor and 6.5 ohms resistor because they are connected in parallel. So instead of finding the current flowing through this combination resistor, it is wise to just find the current flowing through the 4 ohms resistor as well as the 6.5 ohms resistor because that is what we are interested in. So current through the 4 ohms resistor is given by 13.129 divided by 4 and that gives 3.282 amperes. Again, we want to find the current through the 6.5 ohms and that is equal to 13.129 divided by 6.5 and that is also equal to 2.020 amperes. Now you need to understand that the current that flows in this direction will be the same current flowing through the 3.5 ohms as well as the 3 ohms resistor. And so when you are calculating, it is best to use the combination resistor instead of each of the two resistors because the parallel combination was as a result of the 4 ohms resistor as well as the 6.5 ohms resistor. So at the end, you can split this and say that the current through the 3.5 ohms resistor is the same as current flowing through the 3 ohms resistor and that is equal to 2.020 amperes. So at the end, we have current flowing through the 1 ohm resistor, current through the 2 ohms resistor, current through the 4 ohms resistor, current through the 3.5 as well as the 3 ohms resistor. And lastly, we can rewrite that the current through the 5 ohms resistor and the 7 ohms resistor which were short circuited earlier is 0 amperes so at the end we've been able to find the current through all the resistors in this circuit so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye